This is the listening section. This section has four parts. Part 1. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 10. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. You will hear a conversation now. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 10. Good morning, may I help you? I'd like to rent a car, please. Okay, full size, mid size, or compact, ma'am? Full size, please. What's the rate? $78 a day with unlimited mileage. And I'd like to have insurance just in case. Is there an additional driver? No. If you want full coverage insurance, it will be $8 per day. It includes collision damage waiver and personal accident insurance. All right, I'll take it. Here is our brochure, ma'am. Um, full size? Okay. Please choose a model in this section. How about this one? All right. How many days would you like to use it? Just one day. May I see your driver's license and credit card, please? Is the international driving license fine? Yes, it is. Thank you. Please fill in this form. Can you check this box and put your initials here and again here? You have some time to check your answers now. Part 2. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Current assets are those assets of a company that are reasonably expected to be realized in cash, sold or consumed during one year, or during the normal operating cycle of the business. Fixed assets are long-term assets acquired for use in business operations. Fixed assets accounts are also known as capital assets, long-term assets, long-lived assets, or plant and equipment. The value of these assets with the exception of land, is depreciated over their expected lives. Past depreciation is recorded in the accumulated depreciation accounts. The investments category of a U.S. corporation's balance sheet includes assets that are not used in the normal operation of a business and that management does not plan to convert to cash within the next accounting period. The property, plant and equipment category includes tangible, long-term assets acquired for use in business operations. Intangible assets are those assets which have no material substance, as compared to tangible or physical assets, such as buildings and land. Other assets is a category some U.S. companies use for miscellaneous assets that are not specified elsewhere on the balance sheet. Other companies group under this heading investments, intangible assets, and all other assets owned by a company other than current and fixed assets. Before you hear the rest, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20.
Listen to the next topic and answer questions 16 to 20. Depreciation is the periodic allocation of the cost of an asset to expenses over its estimated useful life, made in a rational and systematic manner. The amount of depreciation expensed for each month is called depreciation expense and is recorded into the depreciation expense account. Depreciation expense is also recorded on each long-term asset into a separate accumulated depreciation account. Examples of accumulated depreciation accounts include Accumulated Depreciation Building Accumulated Depreciation Copier Accumulated Depreciation Truck Accumulated Depreciation Office Equipment and so on. The purpose of each accumulated depreciation account is to show how much of the cost of the asset has been allocated as an expense to previous accounting periods. Its balance shows the cumulative sum of all depreciation expense recorded for that asset. The difference between a depreciable asset's cost and its related accumulated depreciation is referred to as the carrying value or book value of that asset. You have some time to check your answers. Part 3. You have some time to look at questions 21 to 30. You will hear a lecturer discussing on ancient dogs. Listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 30. The ability to make choices is a fundamental aspect of human nature, as it allows individuals to shape their own lives and determine their own destinies. However, not all choices are created equal, and some can have a much greater impact on our lives than others. The difference between good choices and bad choices can be the difference between a fulfilling and successful life, and one that is filled with regret and disappointment. Good choices are those that are well thought out and have a positive impact on the individual and those around them. They are based on sound reasoning, consideration of the potential consequences, and a clear understanding of one's values and goals. Good choices can lead to a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment, and can help individuals to achieve their goals and live a happy and successful life. On the other hand, bad choices are those that are made impulsively, without proper consideration, or that go against one's values and beliefs. These choices can have a negative impact on the individual and those around them, and can lead to regret and disappointment. They can also have long-term consequences, such as financial troubles, broken relationships, and even legal problems. One of the main reasons people make bad choices is the lack of foresight. They make decisions based on the present moment, without considering the potential long-term consequences. This can lead to poor decisions that may have negative effects on their future. For example, a student may choose to skip classes and neglect their studies, only to realize later that it has negatively impacted their grades and their chance of graduating. Another reason for making bad choices is impulsivity. People sometimes make decisions without thinking them through, which can lead to poor choices. Impulsivity is often driven by emotions, such as anger, fear, or excitement which can cloud judgment and lead to poor decision-making. Peer pressure can also play a role in making bad choices. People may feel compelled to conform to the opinions and behaviors of those around them, even if it goes against their own values and beliefs. 
This can lead to poor decisions that may have negative consequences on their lives. To make good choices, it is important to take the time to think things through and consider the potential consequences of our actions. It is also important to be aware of our emotions and to avoid making decisions based on them. Additionally, it's essential to surround ourselves with people who support and encourage positive decision making and to resist peer pressure. In conclusion, the ability to make choices is a fundamental aspect of human nature, but not all choices are created equal. Good choices are well thought out, have a positive impact, and align with one's values and goals, while bad choices are impulsive, poorly considered, and go against one's values and beliefs. Understanding the difference between good choices and bad choices, and the reasons why they are made, can help us to make better decisions and lead a happier and more fulfilling life. You have some time to check your answers. Part 4. You have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. You will hear a lecturer discussing on ancient dogs. Listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. The earliest evidence of domesticated dogs dates back to around 15,000 years ago, during the late Paleolithic period. These ancient dogs were likely used for hunting and as guard animals, and were likely similar in appearance to modern-day wolves. As human civilization developed, so did the relationship between dogs and humans. Dogs were used for a variety of tasks, including hunting, herding, and as companions. During the ancient Egyptian period, dogs were highly valued and were often depicted in art and hieroglyphics. They were also mummified and buried with their owners indicating their importance in the culture. In ancient Greece and Rome, dogs were used for hunting, as well as for guarding homes and property. They were also highly respected and were often depicted in literature and art. Oft-cited contenders for the title of oldest dog breeds include the Basenji, which was depicted in cave paintings in Libya that date back to around 600 BC, the Chinese Saluki, which was depicted on Egyptian caves dating to 2100 BC, and the Afghan Hound, which is classed as a basal breed and predates modern dog breeds. The domestication of dogs also led to the development of different breeds, with specific characteristics suited for specific tasks. The ancient Chinese civilization, for example, developed the Shar Pei, a breed known for its wrinkles and loose skin, which was used for hunting and as a guard dog. In ancient Europe, the Mastiff was developed, which was known for its strength and size and was used as a war dog. While the humans did not initially gain any kind of benefit from this process, over time they would have developed some kind of symbiotic relationship with these animals, eventually evolving into the dogs we see today. Little is known about the population history of dogs, the first domestic animal, and how it relates to humans. We examined 27 ancient dog genomes and found that all dogs have a common ancestry that is distinct from that of present-day wolves, 
but with some gene flow from wolves since domestication and substantial gene flow from dogs to wolves. By 11,000 years ago, at least five major ancestry lineages had diversified, showing that dogs have a deep genetic history dating back to the Paleolithic period. When analyzing the genomes of dogs and humans together, similarities were found, such as Levant-related ancestry in Africa and early agricultural Europe. However, there were also differences, such as the impact of steppe pastoralist expansions in West and East Eurasia and a near-complete turnover of Neolithic European dog ancestry. In conclusion, dogs have been an integral part of human society for thousands of years. The ancient history of dogs provides insight into the evolution of both dogs and human civilization and how the relationship between the two has developed over time. The domestication of dogs also led to the development of different breeds, each with specific characteristics suited for specific tasks. The importance of dogs in ancient cultures, as well as the various roles they played, is a testament to the enduring bond between dogs and humans. This is the end of the listening section. You will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.